Hello everyone, my name is Raging Raptor and I welcome you to a new video and to today's video I want to give you a review of the upcoming 1.13 common test update or whatever, what do you want to call it. The thing is 1.13 brings quite a lot of features into the game, some needed ones, some not so needed ones and a new tree obviously. It's basically the update everybody kind of wished for but it's not really having everything we really wanted, you know? It's a double-edged sword. Like 1.13. <laughs> like Frontline with Tier 9s. There's a lot of double-edged swords lately. Like field modifications. <laughs> so yeah, everything good comes with a little bit of evil. And this is what we want to have a look at today. The first things first, the Czech heavy tanks are coming. Or Czechoslovakian, how Wargaming are calling them. Here... I already talked about the VZ55 in a separate video um, and showed you a game. I'm talking about it. Basically, it's one of the perfect, per best meta tanks you can have right now. It's obviously not Chieftain, but it's very good. And this is how the line will look like. It will start on the Skoda T25. You need 56,000 XP on reserve on this Skoda to start getting going with the new heavy tank line. After that, you can see we have quite a bit of an XP drain. Let's put it like this. So if anybody wants to screenshot it, look at it. There you go. But yes, you need quite a little bit of XP to get the big gun, which will not have an autoloader. Keep that in mind. You will not have the autoloader like the tier 9, tier 8 and the tier 10 vehicle. So yeah, after that, you also need 61,000 or 62,000 to get to the tier 8. And then we start going. This is not the autoloader gun, but this is. So you basically have to get the non-autoloader gun before you start getting the turret and then the autoloader gun. A little bit frustrating and I don't really know if you even need or if you also need the tracks. Maybe you need the tracks, who knows. But yeah, after that we keep on going. You excuse me, you need 135,000 for the tier 9 vehicle. And once again, we have a huge EXP drain. The good thing is you basically just need 45,000. Again, I'm not sure about the tracks, but in theory you only need 45,000 to get the tank to a playable level. I don't know how good the stock turret is. Maybe the stock turret is dog shit and you will have issues with it. But in theory, just when we look at the um, at the fighting capabilities, you only need 45,000 XP to start going and then you can get the rest of the tank and bada bam, bada boom, 188,000 to go for the tier 10 vehicle where you like the 100, you need 62,000 to get the best gun for this vehicle. Because yes, I do think the autoloader at the moment in iteration one is stupidly strong. It's absurdly strong. It's ridiculously strong. It's unfairly strong in my opinion. But yeah, that is the new tree. Let's keep on moving and talk about the premium rebalancing. I am playing a little bit of T34 recently because I want the free market. Maybe before the update or the buffs. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I just wait. The thing is, free market in the Forge, I had to sometimes wait because I'm a dick shit and I lost and killed myself and raged and then had to, had to play another tank, which was a T34. It is a decent tank as it is right now. But all those changes will make this tank a lot more convenient to play and a lot nicer to play, especially the dispersion during the turret traverse, which is super, super cool. One final thing I would like to see, though, is a little bit better aim time. Then the CDC. That looks great. More aim time, oh, excuse me, better aim time, better accuracy on the move during turret and hull traverse and better reverse speed. Now give this tank a little bit more top speed and we are Gucci Wargaming. KV5, IS6, 112, VZ, T34 only get 10 more millimeters of penetration. I kind of wish for the KV5 to get a buff on this armor plate up here. This armor plate right here needs to get buffed. Because come on, guys. KV5 has this weak spot, this weak spot, this weak spot, this weak spot, and another weak spot on the left side of the turret. And then we have the gunmander as a weak spot, and we have this plate as a weak spot. <laughs> Yes, just buff this plate right there and we have Gucci. The Räum Panzer, the shovel, how Brume and the awesome epic guys would say, gets a buff in DPM, hit points and aim time and accuracy. I don't really like the DPM buff. It's just 
in general, I don't like giving tanks more DPM as it makes the game even quicker. Sure, it's the shovel, so it's not something like Chieftain or something. So, yeah. Better gun handling, I take it. Would have liked more gun handling during movement, but that's fine. The same goes for the Patton KR. More DPM, don't really see the point. Better aim time, that is nice, but not better gun handling. Also, where's the pilot, by the way? The pilot is a dog shit tank. <laughs> Never played this tank, so I can't really tell you. And the 59 Patton gets some really, really nice buffs. It still won't make this tank any good because it has a huge cupola which is 60mm thick and it has very weak turret armor in general. But giving this tank an even better gun than it already has is more than okay because it's basically just a platform jogging around a very decent gun. Next up we have a new map called Safe Haven which is I think in a Japanese location. It looks interesting, however it kind of feels like a call of um, corridor of duty again. We have the heavy corridor right here and we have the medium TD corridor right here. I never played this map and apparently this map is coming straight out without going into the recon mission mode. But again, it to me personally it just looks like a Pilsen-Berlin clone where we have some stuff where you can't really move as a medium without getting punished a lot and you have heavy, 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 heavy stuff, you know. Going hold down, they even showed it in their video. I don't know. I uh, will see. Maybe I'm wrong. Again, I never played this map so I can't tell you, but the idea itself looks fairly interesting. It has different, um, how should we say, layers to it, quite literally. We have a high layer, we have the sea level layer, and we have the bunker layer, you know. Some moustache person would love to sit in that bunker. <laughs> then we have a new mode called Topography, which allows you as a newcomer to learn maps and different positions. That is great. That is something we need because map knowledge is super, super important in World of Tanks and it will help new players definitely. Here, let's talk about Ruinberg map rebalancing. Wargaming, basically, made this house wider and gave it a little hole down here. So it means if you push from here to here, you have more cover and can spot better. And if you get pushed or are you, if you're coming from here, you go here, you can stay there without getting proxy spotted by the person which is right on this line. And we have this house over here and Wargaming removed this little position right here, as we can see right here, which is nice. It's just a little bit of a noob trap and they still leave this spot right here, which is more than okay. Some more bushes removed which is fine, and here from above. This change, and I want to point out, I, during my streams with the Fosh 155s, I said, fuck Wargaming, fuck Wargaming, fuck RNG, etc., because I was frustrated. Obviously, I don't mean it. It's just me letting off steam, being annoyed at this right moment at the game because RNG screwed me over with the Fosh or whatever happened. But the Fosh was super annoying to Freemark. It was a dog shit tank. But... Credit where credit is due. Those changes is, in my opinion, triple thumbs up. You know, I'm literally using my toe as a thumb right here. It's so good. This is what we need Wargaming. This is something you need to do more often. Small, minor changes to different maps to make them more balanced is a great thing we need right now. Where is Mountain Pass? <laughs> Like, you tease me with this shit, I want Mountain Pass. Because Mountain Pass is super imbalanced. It's so annoying to play. Really, it's super frustrating to play. It's so frustrating to play. You get one side, especially in ranked, you saw that. You get the one side, you want to play heavy, you can basically go to www.seilminusshop.de, which is basically www.rope-shop.com to get yourself a rope to then do some strangulation action, you know? Because it was so, yeah, like, the, 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 the scout spotted you while crossing, you get fucked. You can't really go into a hole down, you get fucked. Super frustrating. And the fact that Wargaming now is doing minor reworks, there are actually a rework of for Berlin in the super test right now, is great. Seriously, I cannot, I, I really like this. Do this more. Next up, Mountain Pass. Next up, Mines. Next up, maybe Proko again. Maybe Mali, I don't know. Actually, Mali is actually fine. I would, no. No, Mali is fine, Mali is fine. I, I, Proko, maybe we need to rework the whole hill again. I don't know. But the thing is, we need such 
changes to the maps. Seriously, it's a triple thumbs up. It's a quadruple thumbs up. It's so good. It's so important. Please do this more often, please. Minor changes, amazing. If they don't work out, revert them in the next update. Bam, boom, bada bang, perfect. And another change is, apparently we can kiss goodbye to the soap rocks. I did try this on some surfaces. I didn't play that, that much, but if this is really true that they removed the slippery surfaces on the soap rocks on rogues in general, that is a great, that's a great quality of life change. So that is perfect. Thank you very much for gaming. Climbing when I know Xan is already crying in his corner, the little mountain goat. But yeah, that's good. I, I like this. That's all again. Double thumbs up. Fuck the soap rocks. They're super annoying. <laughs> Then we have some interface improvements which allow you to immediately sell the old uh, module. It might lead to some people by accident selling the other guns on the check heavies or um, other guns in general, which they could have used and so they lose a little bit of credits. But I think overall it's an okay change. It's it's best suited for most people, not for min-maxers like me. And visual module dependency is also really nice as it show, allows you to see yeah, what do you need and so on and so forth as a new player. So that is totally a-okay. I like this. It's a quality of life change. Wargaming decides to also change the RT missions. That is another double thumbs up for me because it shows that they literally are... They gave us a promise that they said if RT missions get harder, we rework them. One update after the big RT changes update, RT nerf update, RT rework update, aka the nerf. They do it. Good. Well done Wargaming. Seriously, well done. Most of them it's just removing a little bit of stun, like instead of 140, 120, 180 to 160, 120 to 100 and so on and so forth. Less crew module damage. That is obviously good because this mission is basically kind of pushing you into using the damage AG, obviously, which is bad. It's not a good round, to be honest. Doing less damage, that's totally A-OK, -okay because in my opinion, 3.6k combined um, is basically what you need to right now to get the third mark. I think it's a little bit lower. It's a think 3 3 3 4 I'm not sure, but that's totally A-OK -okay in my opinion to, uh, to remove 400 of it. Again, lower stun durations, that is totally A-OK. -okay. So yeah. Cost 3.7k damage of uh, to enemy vehicles. I still think this is insanely f a lot. Like this is a lot, a lot. So maybe Wargaming needs to move this down to 3.5 and this to 2.5 to make it a little bit easier, you know. And obviously Wargaming did some changes as well to the 279 mission tree. Less module damage needed, especially when you're playing Ardy. That's fine. I still think you should just play a normal tank and use something, something. And then if you want to do the secondary mission, at least for the Excalibur, you just play one RT game and get the double stun. Camera, less stun duration, less stun duration, less stun duration, totally A-OK. -okay. And less module damage instead of 30, 25, instead of 35, 30. Same goes here and here less stun duration. I do think that I you still can play some tanks with HE only to do the module damage, especially the coalition tree EBRs. EBRs, 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 just pen your shots, boom, with HE, boom, you get your module damage. It is a luck-based mission. It's nice to see that Wargaming is also lowering that a little bit, making it a little bit easier, kind of killing me because I need to maybe redo the videos. But it's good. And lastly, Frontline with Tier 9s. I already ranted about this change. I don't like it, many of you don't, and most importantly, you know, our friends from another mother don't like it either. Let's put it that way. As a content creator, when one of your videos has less than 90% like ratio, you know you did something wrong like I did right here. Yeah, I'm stupid. Now I have to change this again, because it's German channel. Yeah, you know you did something wrong if people dislike your video for quite a bit. But that is tough. 42% is tough. 60% from the EU community, English community is shite. 
63 of the American is Scheit. 75 from the German ones, which are usually the ones which are most acceptable of changes, is Scheit. Wargaming. I, I hope that if your biggest server, the RU cluster, shows in a video that they dislike those changes so hard that you only have 42 likes, percent likes, Please, 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 please understand that we do not want tier nines. Please, and that's what I. What, that, this is what I mean when I was talking about this update being a double-edged sword. It's a mixed bag. There are some great changes which I highlighted, and then there is this change, the tier nine in front line, and then there is potentially a new tech tree line which won't be meta for tier for clan wars, but it will be very good for random battles. You know. And it's kind of frustrating when you imagine Rino Geronte buffs when, please, a little bit better gun handling. I already discussed this, how fucking god awful the gun handling is. <laughs> so yeah, it is like 1.13 feels like it is the update everybody wants, but it's not made like everybody wants it. But yeah, that is my review of update 1.13. Let me know in the comment section below what your favorite feature is and what your most hated feature is. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to be always up to date, even though I'm going to a vacation for three days. Cheers, and I'll see you around. Also, for videos soon where I show you how god awful this tank was.